to be able to even do give that to yourself and do that for yourself is really really powerful. I watched you do it. Jeez, thank so you. It's not, it's you not made me cry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's been a, it's been an incredibly challenging year. I would say that for sure. You know, because it's always just wondering if I'm doing, am I doing enough? Yes, there are a lot of things that are not within my control, but am I doing enough to get to where I want to go? And, you know, am I even, so even if I'm doing it, am I doing it in the right direction? Mm. You know, and, uh, yeah. But yeah, that's a, million, that's a million dollar question. Are <laughs> we, do we, any of us even know the answer to that? Mm. Really? We're trying to mm. figure it out, but nobody has it figured out. Yeah. A, a question is popping into my mind, and we were t- I think we were, we were almost about sort of tackling this earlier. Uh, what you prefer, riding a horse? It's so random, but... <laughs> You've got you've to keep some space with those random ones. <laughs> right. <laughs> riding a horse, riding a car. And what was, oh, riding a bike. Yeah. Okay. So first of all, not riding a bike because I learned how to ride a bike pretty late. I was still a child, but pretty late. Like I was like But 10. not a bicycle. A bike oh, bike. A motorbike. Like a, a motorbike. Like a, yeah. Okay, so I don't know how to ride those. So it won't oh, be okay. bad. Even, even though <laughs> I was, like this summer, I was on the, um, my friends, a couple of my friends I was with this summer, they, they own scooters. And I was always. In Nigeria? Um, no. I was okay. always on their backs, holding onto them very tightly. Is it my preferred mode of transla- uh, transportation? No. Horse. Okay. Horse sounds very romantic, right? And I said this. <laughs> but you need to be. You need to be aware that there are certain hazards that come with riding a horse. So apart from the amount of like lower body strength that you need to stay and steady yourself on a horse, there is also a bouncing motion that can contribute to your boobs sagging. I feel like I stop it. No, I'm ser- Listen, I saw this on TV. There's a lady who got breast implants, right? And she's she's equestrian. She rides horses. She does like all the competitions. She's fantastic. However, so she was showing, she took a video and there's, you know, there's the motion of even just like bouncing on a horse. Yeah. And because of that motion, she actually got some <laughs> major... Stop it. Saggage. <laughs> major saggage where she had why, to go why, and get why it do fixed. I find, okay, why do I find that so difficult? I, I think, it's okay, true. so maybe she was susceptible to sagging in the first no. place. It there's wasn't a, a case of, like, like, maybe, the maybe horse she didn't, sagged my... Maybe I've she never didn't heard get, of like, this. Maybe she didn't get like proper support, but that was the case. And, it must be. And the, the issue with support, as you probably know, is that you need to f- you need to strike a balance between being able to breathe comfortably and having and the having right support. support. Okay, so I've done all three. I I I ridden a you know I, I used to ride a bike. That's how I pretty much got around in in London. Um, obviously cars. We all ride drive cars, and then I, I am actually very fond of horse riding. And it was never ever occurred to me that in my enjoyment, because those moments for me are uh, are very very enjoyable. And I'm just galloping along, and I'm sp- speaking to this support. speaking to this to this you know to this horse (laughs) and i'm speaking to them and and i'm pretending to myself (laughs) that they understand me and they're listening to me and we're having this bonding moment or whatever it never occurred to me that i needed to consider the fact that i might be getting saggy tits because you you might be i'm enjoying it's a thing (laughs) and and her doctor said it he's like yeah because of never because of that and they showed it to us it's like it's a constant, that constant downward movement. How, how often is she riding? Is that her no, no, um, favorite mode of transportation no, no, around the that's town or something? Like, that's what she does oh, for a yes, living. Do you she know does what I mean? It, oh, yeah. Okay. So she's like constantly right like hours and hours a day so that Training. listen it's we're human like body parts fall like you know what I, mean? I do so, wonder if this is like a you know it's a, a thing a real do you know thing. you can google it but i, I saw i remember I'm definitely seeing gonna be googling that and when later. she said it, i was like yo but it's the same thing like so for example running without support when you when you need the support that's why you have like sports bras and things like that yeah. because the support is important the motion can you know do all sorts of things that's a lot of a lot <laughs> Of movement, yeah, it is isn't it? That's very worrying. Never ever occurred yeah. to me. So, yeah. all right. So when I'm when I start horse riding again, I should just be very very aware that I need to have proper support. Proper support Absolutely. that's going to. But I'm not riding now. Keep often, things in keep place. Keep things in place. Yeah. Thinking about just you know just you just you know we, we're not we're not 16 year olds anymore. We're what I would like to describe us as. Um, uh, you know, fine women. <laughs> we're getting better. I, I'd like to think we're getting better with age, but um, ultimately, we're, we're we're aging, and we're and we're thinking about a lot more sort of serious, um, you know, topics and 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 life. Considering you know life issues, and we're having conversations that are a little bit more mature than than oh my god, I like him, he loves me, I like him, he loves me. <laughs> you know, we're having real serious life life discussions these days, and. 
you know, as as you sort of go through your journey and as you're evolving, are you noticeably, are you actually noticing um, key changes in yourself as a woman who is, you know, now embarking in a new, uh, you know, we're on the other side of 30 now, aren't we? And we're kind of preaching. Speak for yourself. Cause you <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. So and we're, we're, we're sort of maturing and we're, and we're talking life, life now. Are, are you noticing anything in yourself particularly that um, you sort of feel has, has robbed you of anything from, from when you were considerably... Younger. Consid- considerably younger i mean i think i wish i was sometimes i don't not actively but sometimes i wish i was a bit more naive um mm. i think you think you've lost that naivety yeah i think i was a bit I, I i wish i was a bit more naive i wish i was a bit less aware of certain things um ignorance is bliss in some situations but being aware of both myself my surroundings people people what they can be like all that self self betrayal so much to consider it's like a heavy burden. Like, I'm happy with that burden sometimes. But sometimes I wish I didn't know certain things. I wish I, you know, in fact, maybe found out about them, like, later in life, you know. But just the awareness, like, just knowing certain things and being just kind of switched on has robbed me of of a lot of things, man. Like, But I'm grateful for it, honestly. I do. Listen. You know, because it could be a very dangerous world when you're not aware of some of these yes, things, right? Yes, so yes. it it kind of guides how you move. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the choices that you yeah, make. Yeah. So for that reason, I'm grateful. But you know, it's oh, I wish I didn't know this. Then I would be able to just dive into certain things and not worry about consequences, you know, consequences or whatever. But like you know, I've lost that naivety. I've lost like a lot of innocence in certain things just, you know, from life and watching life happen both to me and to other people as well. It's just like, oh God, I wish I didn't. Well, the, the information about horse riding, I feel like it's made me lose something. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. exactly. I've lost, I've lost a little bit of joy yes, in that activity in life, yes, now. Just, yes. so you don't just, just from having right. that information. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. And it's Gosh. that, it's little things like that. It's just like now being aware, like, oh God, this is, there's a mm. risk that this and like, oh, you know, um, but you know, ultimately I don't wish I was younger. I don't wish to go back in time. Everything that's happened to me, everything that I've learned along the way has made me who I am now. And I absolutely love it. I'm happy to be where I am now. I'm happy for the lessons. And I think the most important thing and something I'm still sort of, um, trying to navigate is, you know, the issue of self betrayal, you know, and, you know, we were talking about an inner voice and, um, earlier, you know, and, um, I've betrayed myself in the past, you know, not knowing, not actively knowing that I'm betraying myself, you know, and how, how, how can you tell when you're betraying yourself? Mm. Something just doesn't feel quite right. So I'm very, very aware of that. And I do still betray myself sometimes, but I'm able to catch it and recognize it and name things like, oh, that's what that is, you know. It's not a great feeling to betray yourself, but it's also, you know, it's important to know when that's happening, to catch it when it's happening and to try and prevent it from happening again. Be able to reconcile it in such a way that you're not you're not internalizing it internalizing the self betrayal yeah i mean you listen self betrayal has internal consequences at the end of the day and that's the reason why you try to prevent yourself from betraying yourself but i think the, the key is not is not you know more about internalizing it as a, as it's about reducing the frequency of it right it's, it's staying true to yourself the same way you would be loyal to your friends and the same way you wouldn't, you would try at least, try your best not to betray your friends. Why, when it comes to you, do you feel like it's okay to betray yourself? You have certain boundaries with your friends. You have certain boundaries and you know that I would never cross this line with this person because I don't want to lose the relationship I have with them or I respect them too much to do this. Why, when it comes to yourself, do you, you know, uh, you know, mm. um, and um and self betrayal is and some it's in the little things like it's not even in like what you would expect like a m- big massive thing it's in the little things of like trusting your intuition and when that voice is loud you trying to logically silence the voice right where something just doesn't feel right and then you start questioning yourself 
oh, am I being a bit too, or oh, is this blah, blah, blah. But you know, actually. So it's not in those moments where there's uncertainty. It's in those moments where you know that something is, sometimes you're not able to place a finger on it, but you know that something is not right. Like for me, there's a, there's a tingle that goes through my body when I betray myself, like the physical manifestation. Did you have that in your early 20s, that, that feeling? Do you think it, it lived in you then? Or is it, it did, but I didn't know what it was. Interesting. I, the idea of self-betrayal was just not even a reality to me. It wasn't until a few years ago I was like, oh, that's what that is. I never want to do that again. I never want to feel that way again. You know, it's it's you just even sometimes feeling in, like you're not being sincere with yourself, you know, um, and just going against what you what you know is true inside you. But I, I feel like sometimes you do need to betray yourself a few times to recognize it. That's what it is. So that from afar, you'll be like, oh, yeah, no, we ain't doing this again. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. That's, that's, that's really, really powerful. And I hope that it's, it's something that, a, again, it's that, the, the difference between recognizing that and not allowing it to eat you up. In, because some people would, would, would internalize it in such a way that it's like, you are terrible. You yeah, are like you said, a failure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do, do, you know, do you know what I mean? Yeah, no. As opposed to, oh, you messed up, I messed up there. I shouldn't allow myself to get that. But I think being able to identify that word, that, that word itself is actually very, very powerful. Self-betrayal. Mm. Knowing that you, you, you've actually betrayed yourself in mm. this moment. Mm. Um, and it's actually something you can actually course correct. Yeah moving forward yeah. is a very, very powerful thing. And I, it's funny because I, I used the word self-soothe mm. um, earlier and, and, it, and it's it, it, this kind of grasped me as one of those self-soothing moments mm. where you've betrayed yourself or you're able to recognize that you are not your mistake. Yes. <laughs> you right? Not, yeah. All you've done, you've betrayed yourself and you shouldn't do that again. Yeah. Terrible, terrible, terrible yeah. girl. Don't do that to yourself <laughs> again. Yeah. But you are not your mistake. Yeah, no, yeah. That's not who and you even, are now. And even in the moments where you make those mistakes, give yourself enough grace to recognize that you have learned your lesson. Yeah, yeah. And that lesson was was needed at that moment. At that moment, in order for you to now understand how to best recognize it if it ever appears again. again. And I feel like with our friends, right? Like if our friends mess up, we don't tell them like you're terrible, you're horrible, you're blah blah. We, we, you do that we to yourself. We encourage them. We say, oh, like, wow. hey, guys, like, listen, this happened. It's okay. Like, don't beat yourself up. But when it comes to you, yeah. you're just like, yeah, you're horrible sort of person. Are you? Like, th these are some of the d inner dialogues that we have with ourselves, especially as women, you know, we're really hard on ourselves. And I said, yeah, sometimes there is a place for that, like, to hold yourself to a very high standard. But sometimes... There's a line. Yeah. That's what I was saying earlier. There's there's a line, and you you have to learn not to cross it. I've, I've, I've treaded that line several times. Mm. Um, and it's, again, it's one of those, it's that self-awareness moment to know when you are approaching it, to know mm. that you shouldn't cross yeah. over over to that side. Um, and to be kind to yourself so as you are to others. Cause I would never tell you that you are awful, awful person. <laughs> yeah. I would never say that to you yeah. because you've made a mistake. Yeah. But I would, do you understand? You, mm -hmm. you kind of want to do that to yourself. Yeah. And in itself, that is self-betrayal. Yeah. yeah, in, in a, a way. Sense. In yeah. a way it is, yeah. right? Yeah. We have so much to learn. Yeah. We, we, do, do. we do have so much to learn. But yeah. thank you so much for like having me. It's thank always you. a Thanks pleasure chatting me. with you. you. You're beautiful as well as thank wise. You. Oh, wow. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Thank you. I, I like to believe that um, I, I, I'm very, I'm very selective with my friends. And when I select you, it's, it's a compliment. Oh God, what an honor! <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, it means because I'm very, very intentional about these things. And and again, that's one of the things that you, um, you build um, with maturity and with age to, to know that um, you know iron sharpens iron. Mm. Right, mm. I, I I like mm. friends that I can learn from, and I like mm. friends that I can have this type of honest dialogues with, mm. and mm. I'm learning constantly. Mm. Um, don't want to be the, the the smartest kid in the room. That yeah. that for me is yeah. I, I feel like for me those days are gone. Yeah, um, yeah. it's so not it's not an honor. It's it's, <laughs> it's, it's not. not. So looking for friends that can that can, they're not necessarily mirror you, but friends that can mirror where you want to be yeah right and you can bounce off i was talking to you earlier about your know, accountability partners yeah. very 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 and important I, used to do that. I had a daily accountability partner right and it's so funny such a simple thing right so there were like three or four of us 
and we all had our tasks. So Demi, FK, blah, blah, blah. What, what are the five things that you want to achieve today? And if you achieve it fully, like 100%, you put a green, like it was a color thing. Mm. If you put a, if you, if, you know, you're kind of in the middle, yellow. And if you didn't do it at all, red. But if you forget to update the sheet, black. Yo, that black was so jarring that the thought of black coming on my <laughs> on my sheet, I'm like, nah, bro, I better do this thing so that I can show, you know, the rest of my, my partners how good I've been at. You know what I mean? It, it was really good, but I think we kind of got lost in the colors. And, you know, it got to a point where I was just like, I'm not doing this anymore because... Like, is it worthwhile going back? Sorry? No, no, it is. But I feel like we need to properly set the intention. Because, yeah, it created healthy competition, but I feel like you all need to be on the same page. And um, just so that you can carry each other along. It's not about outshining the rest. Oh, it's not it's about never having about more yes. greens than the rest. You know, we kind of got to that point where it's like, why did you put a black on me? I hadn't, well, it was. Oh, I, s- so, yeah, I get that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it'd be like, well, it was it was midnight in the UK and it was it was 11 um, p.m. in Nigeria. So why did you? Yeah, so that's not it really, got, that's, yeah, yeah that, that's, that's probably a, a step too far. Yeah, it got very competitive where we then lost sight of what we, what we really set this up for. The reason why we did this was so that daily we could check in with each other and be like, wait, listen, this was on your list last week. To hold each why other accountable, yeah, but not done to berate one another, right? No. Hold each other accountable and remind each other of where where we're trying to get to and to provide that support yeah to p- it's very very important you know it's it's one of those situations if you have friends and you're not able to lean on them for that for that for that gentle reminder but not a gentle not even so much a gentle reminder but the kindness yeah the kindness that goes with that right to say where are we that hold you accountable but not not to not to berate you about yeah, it. Yeah. That's that's we, not we, that's not we the goal. needed to reevaluate. I had to pull myself out of out of, out of that situation, and you know, like, okay, so what exactly were you trying to achieve with this? Because that was not the intention when we started mm-hmm. it, but it became that because we became so competitive, you know. So um, we can hear everything when you guys do that. It the mic picks up everything. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we we. It, yeah, maybe it is worth going back to. Um, but, you know, I feel like <laughs> sometimes I need to be at a certain, in a certain space mentally to be able to share my, and maybe that's not the right thing to do. Like, I feel like, oh, I have to have my shit together to be able to share my my goals with no. the next person. No, but that, this is it though. The point is you don't have to have it together. I think if you have a zem- semblance of, of an idea where, where what those goals are, and what I found was actually very helpful for me is that I could actually talk through those goals with somebody and somebody can actually say to me, oh, um, have you thought about it this way? Or yeah. perhaps maybe take it in this bites and maybe next year we can achieve for that because if it's if it's not necessary to knock down your ambition but to also remind you that okay you've got a lot within that list how yeah. much can you take on do yeah. you and to also ask you you know to check in that okay because you don't want a friend that's going to allow you to set up goals that you, you it's just completely unachievable yeah. for you so yeah. it is what it is yeah yeah for that, Kemi, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thanks As you for know, we can you. talk all day long, but I we don't know. have all day yeah. on the recording. So thank you so much for thank coming you. on Sue Sue Cool me. Down. Have you cooled down yet? Yeah. I'm is cool. this is this is this been therapeutic for you? It has. And it's I always can't believe a bit therapeutic. How long it's been. Like it's been talking. It goes. Talking, it talking goes talking very yeah. very very quickly. Yeah. But you know, the camera is only here to be a, a little spy on the wall. That's yeah. not. That's not. Um, there's nothing else. So thank you so much for watching, guys. It's an absolute pleasure sharing with you. I hope this this episode has been useful for you, and I hope that you've learned something. Um, ultimately, I want you to grow um, as well as I am growing. That's the reason why we do this. Um, so yes, enjoy yourselves. Have a wonderful week. And as per usual, don't forget to be extraordinary in the way that only you can be. Take care, guys. Bye.